An important enhancement in version 16 is the addition of sequential probability ratio tests. These tests are used to choose between competing hypotheses. However, rather than starting out with a fixed sample size, a fixed n, you sample observations one at a time. After each sample, you make one of three decisions. You decide that you've collected enough information, so you stop and reject the null hypothesis. Or you decide you have enough information, and you stop and accept the null hypothesis. Or you decide that you don't have enough information to make a decision, so you take another sample. As an example, let's suppose I wanted to take samples from a production process. And let's suppose the mean of that process is supposed to be 250. I'm going to go in and I'm going to collect samples in order to decide whether or not the mean equals 250. Now I could set a predetermined sample size, let's say 30, and always go out and collect 30. But if the process is very close to 250 or very far away from 250, it's probably not necessary to take so much data. The advantage of doing things in a sequential fashion is that you can often come to decisions much more quickly than if you fix the sample size ahead of time. To implement the sequential sampling procedure in Stack Graphics, I'm going to start by going to the top menu to describe numeric data sequential sampling. Now I don't have any data yet, so I'll leave the data variable blank. And on the next dialog box, begin to define the tests that I want to do. The first thing I need to do is specify the parameter I'm interested in. Now I can test means and standard deviations and proportions and rates. In this case, I want to test a mean. I can also test the mean if I know what the value of sigma is, or if I need to estimate it from the data. For simplicity, I'm going to assume in this case that I know that the standard deviation of my process is 10. Now down where it says null hypothesis, I'm going to put in the value of the mean specified by the null hypothesis, which is 250. The alpha risk is currently set at 5%. That's the risk that I incorrectly reject the null when it's true. I'll leave it that way. The next field wants to know an alternative hypothesis. This will be an alternative value for the mean at which I want to have a high probability of rejecting the null. In this case, I'll tell it that if it shifts by one standard deviation, that is, up to 260. That I want to be sure that I will reject the null 95% of the time. And that's what the beta risk is here. That's the probability that I will incorrectly accept the null when the alternative is true. Now I can also choose to do a one-sided or a two-sided test. In this case I'm going to choose a two-sided test and that's the last thing I need to do before I press OK. OK again. And now it's opened up a sequential sampling window. To understand the sequential probability ratio test, the best thing to do is to look at this graph. Each time we collect a sample, we're going to calculate something called the cumulative deviation. And we're going to plot that on the vertical axis. The cumulative deviation will be the sum of the differences between the observations and the null hypothesis. Every time I take a measurement, I'll subtract 250, compute the deviation, and then what I'll plot is the cumulative sum of those deviations. As long as the cumulative sum remains in this white region, I'll continue taking more data. If it gets into either the upper red region or the lower red region, I'll stop sampling and reject the null hypothesis. If it eventually gets into the green region, I'll stop sampling 
and accept the null hypothesis. To see how this works, let's pretend we've gone out and started to collect some data. Let's go to the data book and in column one type the value 254. This supposes that I've gone out and collected a first measurement and it turned out to be 254. If I go back to my sequential sampling window and press the data input dialog button, I'll now tell it that column one has my data. Okay, my first measurement was 254. The null hypothesis was 250. That's a deviation of four. So the procedure has now plotted a point at four for my first sample. That point is in the white region, so I'll have to go collect some more data. Back to the data book. Uh, the second observation, let's make it 261. Back to the sequential sampling window. Well, the deviation's a little larger now, but it's still in the white area. Can't make a decision. Back to the data book. The third observation I got was 273. Back to the sequential sampling plot. Well, we're headed off, it looks like, to the red region, but we're still in the white region, so I think I still need some more data. How about 270 for my fourth observation? Yes, that did it. Now that cumulative deviation has gone into the red region, now I stop and reject the null hypothesis.